All right, we'll start with Alex Schiffer with The Athletic. Good evening, Sean, or should I say good morning? I, uh, I have two for you. Just to start off, I mean, with your two first-round selections in, uh, in Cam and J-Ron, what would you like from them in the process, and how do you see them fitting in with you guys? Yeah, sorry, I, I could, couldn't hear the beginning of that. Uh, but, um, yeah, regarding, regarding Cam and, and Dayron, both uh, ecstatic to have them, first and foremost. Um, you know, we know those guys very, very well, very comfortable with, with who they are, both as people and, and, and how they'll fit in from a, from a system fit and so forth. With, with Cam, first and foremost, incredible scorer, shooter, uh, really enjoyed getting to know him. And uh, I, I think he's, he's a fit with, with what we're doing moving forward. And, uh, and, and Dayron, you know, size, mobility, his ability to stretch the floor, which to be quite frank, hasn't been really seen yet. So we're excited to get both these guys in the gym, both continue to develop and, and with our development coaches and, and go from there. And then you just kind of mentioned that with Cam. I mean, he was considered one of the best scorers in the draft, obviously. And, and you add him on a roster where you have three of the best scorers of their generation. I mean, what do you like about that long term as, as he gets under your system and can learn from some of those guys? Yeah, I think I think we're very very fortunate to have the players that we already do on our roster, and um, you know you see how hard they work, you see their tireless work ethic on a daily basis, and you know when we bring in the young bucks like we do, you know, you know you could make the argument that our players are often some of our best development coaches. You know, they sit there and watch those guys, and they learn from them and, and so forth. So um, you know the way specifically the three and Joe Harris and everybody else uh attacks the daily grind you know that's that's a great example for all these young guys to follow and and and, and grow from brian lewis new york post you're muted brian i'm sorry no worries. kind of along those lines with two-parter with cam um how much of that is kind of just doubling down on a a strength that you guys enjoy against pretty much every team that you're playing against in terms of, you know, being able to get your shot isolation and score at will. And secondly, with Deron, um, how much of that pick is best available and how much of that pick is looking at kind of the center position where you have a lot of guys, obviously with Blake is a free agent, Jeff's a free agent. Uh, Deandre didn't really play much down the stretch. How much of that is position and how much of that is best available? You know, I think we, to answer the first part, you know, the second part of your question there, you know, we weigh both, you know, um, best available and, and positional needs and so forth. Um, we've always taken best available. So on our board, that's, that's the way we look at it. Just um, don't want to miss out on an opportunity. So, you know, we're excited to have you know, both those guys that, you know, as I've said before, we have higher on our board and we're excited to have them. Um, you know, strange draft, strange draft year where you didn't necessarily get to see you know, all the guys as much as you'd have liked uh, under normal, um, under a normal situation, you know, pre-pandemic, so to speak. But, you know, I give our scouts a lot of credit because they did a heck of a job this year and, uh, and, and the workload was immense. So for, for them to uh, be as high on those guys and for them to, to be in our range, you know, we're, we're, we're thrilled with those guys. Um, to answer the first part, you know, with Cam, I think he has an elite skill. You know, and you, you watch him play, you watch him find a shot, create a shot. Um, that's that's at a very, very high level. Uh, for him to continue to learn from, as you mentioned, three of maybe the greatest scorers, you know, the league has right now is, is, will be great for him. Um, the other part of it is he is, is fearless and he's not afraid. And I think that's what we're looking for. We're looking for guys that competitive, have that edge, to them and, and a chip on their shoulder. And I think that's what we found with both those players specifically uh, in talking to them, watching them play, watching them compete at a very, very high level. Christian Winfield, New York Daily News. Hey, Sean, how's it going? Uh, congratulations right. on your uh, on a successful draft. Um, Thanks, right, no problem. Two questions for you. Um, obviously, you guys are competing for a championship. You've said this yourselves. Um, so just wondering how rookies can kind of fold into that timeline, right? Because it's a lot of, they've got a lot to make up. How do you see that working out? Yeah, I look at it like it's a great opportunity. You know, with every championship team, you know, the players that are often talked about the most are obviously the stars, obviously the ones that, you know, play the 35, 40 minutes a night. But if you look back at every run, every championship run, there's always been 
that one, two, three players who maybe aren't in that, you know, top eight rotation that come in and whether it's throughout the year or in the playoff run, really uh, step up big. And uh, we're going to need that, you know, when, when we're competing and, and we're hopefully contending, that's the plan here. We're going to need somebody to step up, step up for us. And I think with those two specifically, um, you know, they've, they've played at a very high level in college. They've been, they've had some great coaches. And again, I mentioned that just the, just the level of competitiveness from both of them and, you know, the fact that they're not, not afraid and uh, it'll be great to get them with the group. Right. And secondly, you know, I think back to the beginning of last season where, you know, you guys were involved in James Harden trade rumors before the deal becomes official. Uh, and, you know, the players credited you for saying, hey, you know, talk to me if you need to. You know, you were kind of candid and open and honest with them about the idea of a trade uh, and that for them helped them just being able to transition later when they did eventually get traded. They knew it was a possibility. Um, you guys obviously are in trade rumors again with these picks. You've added five rookies to a championship team. Is it, are you kind of following a similar blueprint from last year where you're telling them, hey, you know, anything could happen, so be ready? Or are you moving forward as if these guys are going to be part of the team? Um, look, the, the plan is with these these players we have right now, you know, they're, they're on our team. They're, they're the Nets. And these guys are going to get a, a great opportunity to, be part of the Nets family you know we look forward to welcome them to Brooklyn and uh, and going from there you know I think one thing we always try to do is be as honest and upfront as we can if there's rumors out there which is honestly it's part of the business that we're in you know it's uh it's not the fun part having to read your name out in, in the press and so forth but you know it's it's the nature of the business and it's the job we chose so you know guys are mature enough these days to, to figure out what's real and what's not. And all we can do is make sure we have honest conversations with them and make sure that we're available, whether that's myself, whether it's Steve or anybody else to have these honest conversations with our players. Thank you. Greg Logan, Newsday. Sean, I also have two questions and I would like to ask them separately. Uh, number one, uh, I would like to ask where you stand with Spencer Dinwiddie and some of the moves you made today indicate that it is possible he might be part of a deal, a much larger deal with the Wizards and the Lakers. I don't know how much liberty you have to discuss that, but uh, would would it be best given his contract situation to try and move him to accumulate many other assets? Yeah, thanks, Craig. You know, it, it's difficult to discuss the hypotheticals. You know, I, I think you sounds like you know more about the tr upcoming trades and so forth than I do. But, um, you know, we've been focused on on the draft right now, you know, Spencer obviously being a, you know, a, a pending free agent, we'll have to wait for the right time, right time to talk to him and talk to his, his agents and, and his people. And, and we'll figure out what's best for both Spencer and, and the Nets. And if there's, if there's something to be done where he's returning terrific, if it's not, and he, and he's moving on, look, we, we, we wish Spencer all the best. You know, he's been nothing but a pro his entire time here. And, and he, he's, to be quite frank, deserved the right, you know, to be a free agent. But 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 also, he's he, he seems it seems like he's unaffordable at this point. Well, I, I think that gets back to the work that Spencer's put in. You know, I, I can't tell you what his market is going to be. I, I can uh, hypothetically have a stab at it, but you know, the, the the good thing for him is is you know he's likely in line for generational money and. Uh, you know, he, he deserves it. He's put in a lot of work and, you know, we, we obviously are, are very happy for anybody that's, that's done that and deservedly so. And, and finally, and finally, uh, uh, the second round picks that you made, uh, none of those three appeared in a single mock draft that I saw, you know, can you kind of go over those three picks and what you saw in them? Sure. Well, uh, Kessler, Marcus, and Raekwon, you know, we, we know uh, all three of them very well. I mean, this is what we're doing our job for. We've scouted them. We've seen them live. You know, we really enjoyed sitting down and meeting with these guys. Um, again, 
all three very competitive, all three high upside. We enjoyed watching Kessler, his ability to stretch the floor, get out there, uh, a positional need for us. Um, looking forward to develop all three. Um, Marcus, I, I'm sure you guys have seen him shoot and play at, at, at Creighton and what his ability is. Um, can really stretch the floor again and a fierce competitor, very tough individual. Raekwon is a very unique player. You know, you know, step out on the court, stretch the floor some, facilitate as a big, handle the ball. Uh, and if you watched him play at Florida State, very well coached, uh, high, high basketball IQ. So we're really looking forward to getting those guys you know, in the summer league program with us and going from there. Back to Alex Schiffer. Hey, Sean, you just touched on this a little bit. Uh, Kessler specifically, I mean, he's a guy that, you know, it looked like he could go in the first round in some mock drafts. I guess I'm not reading as well as Greg these days. But uh, but it looks like he can play, you know, maybe the two through four and, and help you in a lot of different ways. Just, just specifically with him, is, is he a guy that you see as a, as a forward or a multi-positional guy that you kind of move around the floor? Yeah, absolutely. You know, especially at this level and this time for these guys to develop, I, I think we would we would be doing them a disservice if we tried to put any individual in a box. You know, we haven't had an opportunity to see them uh, live in our gym, you know, with our players and specifically our coaches. You know, our development coaches have done a heck of a job. And, um, you know, th these are the things that I'm excited about is, is getting a young group, you know, uh, that hasn't been molded yet, get them in, you know, with Adam and Ryan and Tiago and, and, and Royale and have those guys really work on them, which is going to be terrific. And then if I just have uh, one follow-up, obviously Mike D'Antoni resigned yesterday as an assistant coach. It, it's kind of unclear. Do you anticipate him staying within the organization in a different capacity or you guys have just both gone your separate ways there? You know, you know thanks for bringing that up, Alex. You know, he, he was an amazing and is an amazing, amazing coach and even better individual. You know, our time here with, with Mike and, and learning from him over the past year was incredible. What, the, what he brought to our group was, was absolutely terrific. Um, you know, you, we all know how close Steve and Mike are, and uh, you know, he brought a dimension to our group that w we will certainly miss without a doubt. But we wish him well, we wish his family well, and, and whatever their endeavors are. And look, they're always welcome back, you know, around the nets, around us. But I think for the time being, as Mike's um, mentioned to us, it's, it's family first. You know, he's going to enjoy, you know, his family, his wife, Laurel, and, and, we, and we wish them well. Thank you, Sean. Tom Dowd, BrooklynNets.com. Hey, Sean, you referenced this a little bit, but in, in adding a first-round pick tonight, drafting five guys overall, and you know, obviously you, you had traded away some younger guys in the Harden deal, how important was it to you to get some more younger players uh, back in the system? Yeah, you know, it's always important for us to have a, a diverse group, you know, you know, some young, some old, you know, different levels of experience and so forth, um, different backgrounds, to be quite frank. So and I think that's what we've got with this group. You know, we're bringing in people that have a variety of different skills. They're young. Some skills are, are high level. Others still need to be developed. And, you know, I, I think, to, you know, to get a group in here, specifically these characters that um, that possess that you know, again, the level of competitive spirit and, and fight and with a chip on their shoulder. I think uh, the day after the draft, you know, everybody sits back and looks at who went where and, you know, people will be disappointed. People will be happy. And that goes for the individuals, too, because they'll sit there and go, I think I should have been drafted here, here and here. All I can say is we're thrilled to have them. We're thrilled to have these guys, you know, within our family and, and, and watch them grow, watch them develop. Brian Lewis. Hey Sean, uh, I'm just curious. Uh, you refer, you referenced Cam, and you talked about his confidence. It's pretty obvious he has unswerving faith in his abilities. If you talk to him, uh, does did that play a little bit into you know his his shooting percentage from three? In other words, I mean, he's his form is great. His efficiency maybe doesn't quite match up to that form. Is that just a matter of the shot selection at LSU, and he had to take a lot of contested threes, or you know, does the confidence play into those threes where you have to kind of teach him efficiency? Yeah, you know, great question. I think it's a little bit of both, Brian, to be honest, you know, where, you know, these guys are playing at a level where oftentimes, you know, they're, they're maybe asked to do, to do too much or have to do too much. But, you know, I look at a guy like Cam who never shied away from the moment, never shied away from the shot. 
um, supreme confidence, believes in his shot, believes in his shot making ability, and you know the tireless worker than he is of what we've witnessed so far. Um, you know, when a guy is not settling for anything, that's going to be important. I think you could ask all these young men and they could say, look, we've got a long way to go, a long way to improve. But some of their role models in life in basketball um, speak for themselves. So, you know, you, you see Cam um, talk about how he, his mentor and he, what he likes to look at, it, obviously Kobe Bryant films and tapes and so forth. And, and a lot of these young men do the same thing. When, you know, if you're going to compare yourself, I'm not saying he's comparing himself to Kobe, but some of those attributes and wanting to have that fierce competitive spirit, you know, those are things that, you know, will bode well for a guy maximizing his skill set.